welcome to gemchem now today's video is on boron nitrogen compounds and this is inorganic polymers part 8 video and here we are going to deal with structure and preparation of boron nitride now before starting already seven videos are uploaded in channel you can watch it i will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video and if you are new to gemchem do not forget to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates now let us start Now the structure of boron nitride looks like this, that is, lattice consists of different layers, each layer having a hexagonal arrangement of boron and nitrogen atoms, that is, in a hexagonal arrangement there is alternate boron and nitrogen. Different layers are arranged in such a manner that boron in one layer is immediately above or below a nitrogen atom and vice versa, that is, if we place a boron here, in the next layer, or in the adjacent layer, up and down, there will be one nitrogen here and one nitrogen above. Similarly, for this nitrogen, there will be one boron above and one boron below. Okay. In particular layer, boron nitrogen bond is formed by overlap of sp2 hybrid orbital. So, here we are having an BN bond due to the overlap of sp2 hybridized orbitals. And this implies that the boron and nitrogen has 2pz orbitals left. For boron, in case of boron, there is a vacant 2pz orbital left. And for nitrogen, there is a filled 2p left. And this filled 2p consists of two electrons and there can be bonding between the adjacent layers. Now you have to understand the boron nitrogen distance in a particular layer is 1.45 angstrom and distance between two layers is 3.33 angstrom. If we now see, as between adjacent layers, boron atom is placed above and below nitrogen atom, it implies that there is continuous migration of dative bond across the layers and this provides a stability to the molecule. There is a continuation and there is a formation of dative bond as a result of which we can provide stability to this particular molecule. Since this molecule is isoelectronic with the graphite, it has similar properties of graphite and it is also known as inorganic graphite. If you see, in case of graphite, there is complete interaction between the layers and delocalization within the layers but in case of boron nitrides there is partial delocalization within the layer followed by interaction between the layers as we have seen when we have learned about borazines there is a partial delocalization from nitrogen to boron in each layer and so this makes a difference from graphite because there is a complete interaction between the layers. If dative pi bond formation takes place, the structure of hexagonal boron nitride will be somewhat following. So see here, if dative bond formation has taken place, so boron will have a negative charge, whereas the nitrogen will contain a positive charge. So from this particular structure, we can understand that there is a generation of permanent dipoles. That is, if you see here, this has a negative charge, this has a positive charge. So, we have a dipole from nitrogen to boron. On boron nitrogen atoms of the layers, which now begin to interact across the layers through van der Waals interaction. So, this boron having negative charge will interact with this nitrogen having positive charge through van der Waals interaction. There is also possibility that boron nitrogen atoms located above and below each layer can show tendency of a dative sigma bond formation. There is a possibility along with the dative pi bond formation, there may be a dative sigma bond formation. But this possibility is only a possibility as this is not seen because the separation between the two layers is too large for a sigma bond formation. And if this bond is formed, this bond is very weak. So now our plan is to take these layers together 
towards each other so that bond formation becomes easy. What is the method? We can do this like when hexagonal BN that is this one is subjected to high pressure or dynamic shock methods at temperature approximately 1700 degrees Celsius, it acquires a woodside structure in which all the boron nitrogen bonds are sp3 hybridized now there is a change of hybridization for boron and nitrogen from sp2 to sp3 having tetrahedral arrangement in space and this is the cause when there is a stability in dative sigma bond formation so if you see here previously there was 2 sp2 2sp2, 2sp2 and 2pz orbital present in boron and nitrogen. For nitrogen, we had seen that 2sp2 one has lone pair, another one has single, this also single and this also single. Now what happens is that there is a rehybridization of these. These all combines and rehybridizes to give us another four hybridized orbitals of nitrogen which is 2sp3, 2sp3, 2sp3 and 2sp3 and each is having same number of electrons as was in the previous case and same thing occurs for this boron where here there is one electron here also there is one electron here also one electron and 2pz remains vacant similarly after rehybridization taking place boron will have one electron here another electron here another electron here and this 2sp3 hybridized orbital will remain vacant this is how rehybridization occurs but you have to remember that this structure is not at all stable. When hexagonal nitrides are heated to near about 3000 to 3 to 50 degrees Celsius in presence of this amount of pressure, then cubic form of BN is generated. And now this cubic form is actually more stabler than the woodside form. And this has a diamond parallel structure. This is inorganic diamond formation. Such conversions can be achieved at slow such conversions can be achieved at slightly lower pressure and temperature by addition of either boron oxides or lithium potassium magnesium nitrides and conversion is possible at 4 to 8 gallon pascal and temperature of 1500 degrees celsius so extreme condition can provide us with cubic boron nitride in cubic boron nitride the tetrahedral arrangement is present where each boron atoms form sigma bond with nitrogen and for the fourth one that is the fourth orbital which is left over for boron receives electron density from the neighboring nitrogen atom. The nitrogen atom formed three normal sigma bonds and one dative sigma bond. Here there is a formation of dative sigma bond rather than pi bond in which it donates electron density via sp3 to a neighboring empty orbital of p. After this transformation is achieved from hexagonal BN to cubic BN, the stative bonds are delocalized over entire arrangement of boron nitrogen atoms. This cubic form is hard and superior to diamond in mechanical strength. The disadvantage is that it suffers from superficial oxidation there is a oxidation in the layer which is topmost layer of cubic boron nitride by air at high temperatures now we will see the few uses of cubic boron nitride it owes to its hardness as a result used in heavy industries can withstand temperatures over and above 3000 degrees celsius here it will be 3000 degrees Celsius. As a result, it can be used for high temperature product generation. Next, owing to its property, it is essentially the cubic form of boron nitrides, 
which finds its utility in coating of crucible linings. The crucible which we use in labs is used and made by cubic boron nitride. Now we will see the preparation of boron nitrides in different methods. First is that we will heat boron to white hot in atmosphere of nitrogen or NO or ammonia. So let us do the reaction. So in this case, if we take two boron plus nitrogen, it will produce two BN. 2BN means that it is actually polymeric BN, right? Boron nitride, N number of. Similarly, 2B plus 2 ammonia will give us 2BN plus 3 hydrogen. If we use in O2 environment, then it will produce 3NO2 giving 3BN plus B2O3. Here this can be NO2. Nitrogen oxides, whether it is NO2, N2O3, it depends. Now see the next method is that heating B2O3 with HgCN whole 2 or KCN or NH4Cl. So if we try to write the reactions, then B2O3 plus Hg Cn whole twice 2BN plus CO plus CO2 plus Hg. Next one is B2O3 plus 2KCN gives 2BN plus K2O plus 2CO. Similarly, B2O3 plus 2NH4Cl gives 2BN plus 3 water plus 2HCl. Now the next method which we will see is that heating of anhydrous borax to red hot with dry ammonium chloride in platinum crucible. Remember this platinum crucible is used as platinum is your catalyst. Now what is borax? Borax is Na2B4O7. When this is reacted with 2NH4Cl and we take a dry environment with red hot condition, then we get 2BN plus 2NaCl plus B2O3 plus 4 water. The last method by which we can prepare boron nitride is heating boron amide or imide or by action of ammonia on BCl3. So 2B NH2 whole 3 this is amide on being heated produces 2BN plus 4 ammonia and if we take imide B2 NH whole 3 this being heated produces 2BN plus ammonia and the last method of using ammonia on BCl3 is that if we consider 2 BCl3 plus 8 ammonia produces on heating 2 BN plus 6 NH4Cl. So this was the total topic of boron nitride in one video. So hope this was helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to like, share, subscribe and comment.